So, uh, first off, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I ate a lot of sour keys today. And I also ate some tikka masala Pringles that someone gifted to me. So I'm doing great. Ooh, sounds tasty. Um, I just want to kind of rewind a little bit for you. Do you have like the first memory that you have of picking up an instrument? Uh, Yeah, I was in my friend's house and we were on the bunk bed. And there there was this girl that I really liked at the time. And my friend had this old, just terrible looking and very broken guitar. And I remember picking it up. And I remember like, I remember like realizing that I'd never really like played a stringed instrument before. Um, And also being like, whoa, this is really cool. Like guitar is a cool thing. And she looked at me and like, kind of like liked it. So that was my first memory. Okay. Um, So was music i guess did that come from your friends mostly or was that from your family uh initially i just like thought it was cool and wanted to do it i mean i think like you know i could like be like yeah i like had a dream and then i went to the store but it wasn't really like that like i just really liked the idea of it and started doing it and then you know the more i did it the more i loved it and then the more i loved it the more i realized how powerful it was but really at the beginning it was really just like something that i thought was cool to do and um you know that was it really okay Okay. but again like you know the 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 moment where i was like holy moly this is like a really powerful tool and and was really fun and also like i was good at it was you know like i definitely got a lot of encouragement from my family and from my friends and stuff so Okay, so who is, I guess, your biggest musical influence in your family? Was it, like, your mom or your dad? or? Oh, I mean, I don't know, because it's so, like, I don't really know how that works. Like, I think there's, there's like, there's, like, paradoxal influence. Like, there, like I feel like I'm influenced by, like, the lack of influence. Like, almost like when, like when, my, when I'd be playing the guitar and my dad was like, stop playing the guitar, come down for dinner. I feel like that made me want to play the guitar more. So, you know, I could say that was a big effect, but... Again, also just like, you know, people often come up to me and like parents definitely come up to me and they're like, like, how do I get my kid to like be as into music as you are? And I'm like, you can't really like the best thing you can do is like leave a kid alone and let him just or him or her just be themselves. And if they love what they what they're doing, then they'll keep doing it. Um, But, you know, I think in terms of like showing me cool music and like, like opening me up to, to interesting things like my dad was really like he really like had me listen to like a lot of the music he grew up on, like, like madness and, um, you know, George Michael and, uh, Duran Duran and like a lot of eighties, like pop music. And, um, and like Pink Floyd was a huge thing for me. And my dad really like, I remember my dad was like, I'll pay for your guitar lessons as long as you learn, wish you were here. And I was like, what is that? And then I like heard it and I was like, Whoa, my dad likes this. This is cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, and I think my mom, my mom influenced me because she like, she's just cool, and she's my mom, and I love her, and and like my mom was a painter, so I was really exposed to like that side of art, um, which really like lended itself to music quite nicely, and um, I'm really glad for that too because I didn't study music in high school. I had the I went to an art school and I picked a major, and I had the opportunity to like pick music, and I'm so happy that I didn't because again, music was this space I could go to where I could just be myself, and no one could tell me what to do, and the idea of like studying that really like makes I'm so happy that I didn't because I no one ever really like gave me any like you know told me how to be a musician I just was in in my private life and I think that's really what makes art so cool is that like it's just your expression so so you said that you went to an art school right Mm -hmm. um what was your major then (laughs) so uh, sorry full circle so my my because my mom was a painter i i grew up painting and like really being in love with like visual art and just like drawing and mucking around with paint and stuff so i picked visual art and at the guidance of of my vice principal actually at my elementary school he's like well why why do you want to study music and i was like well because it's the only thing i'm good at and he's like but you can paint and stuff and i was like ah actually you're right and i remember like being like that's so much more attractive to me because even even though it was like paint this apple there were parts of the program that i was in that were like i i took a conceptual arts class in high school so i learned about like like the young brits and like 
Marcel Duchamp and like, you know, all these art movements. And that was so powerful for me because like, you know, in conceptual art class, they're like, make a conceptual art piece. And it's like, yeah, I mean, you do have to like have an artist statement and there is some kind of reconnaissance in like what you're doing, but there was so much more expression and I felt like so much more of an individual in that program. So again, let your kids just make stuff. <laughs> it's the point of what was I'm trying to say. Was there an art movement, I guess, that really influenced you? I really liked the, I really liked, like, I'm a big fan of dadaism. So like Marcel Duchamp and, and uh, uh, Max Ernst, I believe the guy's name was. Um, but Marcel Duchamp's like my all time favorite visual artist because I mean, I'm a big fan of like history too. And I remember in, in school, we had to do this whole project on postmodernism. And um, I'm a big fan of like people that I feel like were super ahead of their time. And I think Marcel Duchamp like basically called it like at the end of the first world war, he was like, art is nothing. Everything is crazy. Here's a urinal. And I think that's so, was so cool at that time to be doing that. Um, so um, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I'm, 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 I don't, I'm not really into like abstract expressionism and all that stuff. I find it's like, I don't know. Anyways, we could talk about art all day, but I, I really liked like the idea of a scene and the idea of a movement. And when I was in school and learning about like all these dataists, like in Sweden or Switzerland or Sweden, I think they were in Sweden. No, maybe they were, yeah, they were in Zurich and they would like hang out in these cabarets and like. Lautrec would like be around and then like that turned into like like um uh what's it called uh Dolly what's that movement called it's on the tip of my tongue um surrealism and then like that turning into this and it's just I think that's so cool so I don't know ranting about art do you feel like I guess since art was such a huge part of your life and I'm assuming still is a big huge part of your life right now do you feel like that's influenced like your approach to writing lyrics yeah, I really do. Um, I don't know if it's so much just because I have so many like influences in my brain that I can just be like, oh, that reminds me of Bowie or that reminds me of, you know, like some country song I heard or that reminds me of like that day in high school when I like only listened to the Velvet Underground because I like this thing. You know what I mean? It's sort of like that. But um, I do think I really appreciate artists that I think had like a wherewithal with in terms of like where how history had had played out up until the point that they were making what they were making and how what they were going to make was going to affect the rest of time and like the combination between all those things is really cool like someone like david bowie is a really great example like i could listen to a, like records after records of him and just be in awe of like how ahead of just quite ahead though like it's not like he was like marcel duchamp where it was like a hundred years later we're like oh my god what a brilliant man it's like the dude was like two years in, in front of everyone. And I think that is so much more impressive because it's like, it's, it's so powerful to do that. So that's something that I look up to. And I, I often try to think about like, but I mean, at the same time, I just try to make stuff that I like and like, I don't know. Is there an aspect, I guess, of you try, I guess maybe striving for that within your music? Striving for what? I guess kind of to be like, I guess, right lyrically, or create like a world of some kind kind of like Bowie did uh I'm not sure because it's like Bowie is his own thing and I like I feel like any any attempt to emu emulate Bowie would just be a failure no matter what or who you were like it's just like trying to like remake a cathedral it's like what's the point um but I think the thing that I draw inspiration from is like the 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 conviction that what you're doing is is true and like you know believing in in your message and being consistent while being so inconsistent. So I don't know. I mean, I draw a small inspiration, but no, I don't think I I don't know if I want to be Bowie. I think that's like only reserved for someone like Bowie. Is there I guess so you said like leaving a message kind of thing what is that message for you what do you feel like you want your message to be oh man i mean i don't know because each song is a message and each thing you do on stage is a message but um i think the thing i'm really interested in right now is like i i really had this revelation um maybe you know a couple years ago or i mean it's it's a continual thing but i i really came to like this realization that i think pop like the way that we perceive pop music now in our culture, I think is super sexist. 
And I think that like for a long time, there was certain kinds of music that was deemed as lesser than the rest of music. And I think that's because it was made for women. And I think that that's really has been really bad for a really long time. I think a cool thing that's happening now is artists like Shawn Mendes, artists like, you know, even Justin Bieber that are making music that are like predominantly for people that are attracted to them is like, a, and I mean, I think this is also homophobic. Like there's a lot of, you know, bad stuff wrapped up in this. But I think the cool thing is like this music is starting to become more accepted. And I think that has a lot to do with like the general tone of like Me Too and the general tone of like, these LGBTQ plus movements really like permeating throughout our culture. And I think for a really long time that music was like deemed as less important because, you know, half the population didn't understand it. And just because you don't understand something like they're people, you know, men mostly are like, this is, this is stupid. It's like the classic thing where someone's like, I really don't like early Beatles records. And it's like, why? It's cause it's, I want to hold your hand and like, it's song, love songs for teenage girls, but for some reason that's like not okay. And I think that's what I'm really like excited about is making music that is deemed as acceptable that is made for that audience. So I think that's something I'm really excited about. And like, I think there was a, a moment where it's like people knew that they could, you know, capitalize off of that kind of music. Um, and it wasn't good. Like the respect of like, looking at a teenage girl and saying like, I'm going to sing a song for you and I'm going to make the best song for you. And I'm going to try to like understand what you're going through, I think is like a beautiful thing. So I think that's kind of what I'm interested in right now. Okay. Sorry. Uh, wow. This is getting deep. I'm going to stand up and then sit back down. <laughs> well, thanks. Those were like a lot of really, a lot of very eloquent thoughts. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad it's coming yeah. off that way. Yeah.